rise up in pick ban priority as well when we've seen Yankos play it so well in the past. There it is, removed straight away alongside the Callista that you were talking about. There's the Syndra, and now we'll see where G2 decide to go for their second ban. I imagine they're going to take the center off the board. It's something that Fnatic have prioritized a lot over playoffs. And when we think about other things that they need to take away, like there's things like the Gragas. There's also things like the um, the Thresh that they need to think about because it is something that Hilasang often defaults to when a lot of his strong supports are unavailable. But a lot of them are actually up on the boards. They're still going to take it away anyway. And that's immediately, ah, okay, it's because of the Aphelios priority that Fnatic is going to grab for Ooh. themselves. This is such a quick first set of pick and bans, though. Azir, Jarvan immediately locked in. There's Tom <laughs> Kent alongside Vega. I remember watching Nemesis play the Vega against G2 at the start of Spring Split. Didn't work out too well for him then, but it is one of his signature champions. Wow, look, this is like speed drafting, but it yep. clearly both these teams have come in with a plan. The Vega being used as a counter pick to the Azir. It's something that Nemesis is very comfortable on, something that he can default to. And we'll talk a lot more about it when we actually get into the game, but the second phase of bans already coming in thick and fast, man. Holy moly, they're like, okay, we've gone through Robin Schultz, we've gone through the pregame, let's get on into this match of League That's of Legends a Lulu. as quickly as That's we can. The Lulu is locked in. Uh, expect that to be the support here, of course, because Azir already locked in for the mid lane. Silas Lee Sin, the final two picks for Fnatic. So that's going to be Silas in the top lane. It's Lulu Cogmore? It's Lulu Cogmore <laughs> for G2. <laughs> like, wow. That is so brave. Caps has been out of position so many times across the course of this playoffs. And so you're like, okay, if you get caught, we're just going to save you anyway. This is like the fastest draft I think I've ever seen. <laughs> that, was, that was ridiculous. Okay, so both sides clearly knowing what they want. Like, let's jump straight into it. So the Silas being used as an answer to the Yawn, something we've been seeing a lot over in the LCK and the LPL, and it's because you can take away that Yawn ultimate. You scale very well. That AP additional damage that you'll bring into these late game fights offers a lot of value. And again, you kind of look across the board for Fnatic. Strong scaling in the form of the Veigar. The amount of zone control that he's going to provide is going to make it difficult for G2 to be able to dive onto the back line. Aphelios is going to have so much peel with this composition because of the amount of disengage that you have from the Lee Sin, from the Tom Kench, from the Vigar as well. So Fnatic going for more of a scaling approach with a little bit of a weaker early game with not that many lanes to play around in the early stages. But it feels like G2 don't have a huge amount of early game themselves. Jarvan is very good at ganking, but when you put him alongside something like a Cogmore who wants to get to two, three items before he's incredibly powerful, an Azir who's looking for that Nash's Tooth, and then maybe a Rabadon's on top of it before he's incredibly powerful, both teams seem to be willing to play a slower pace early game. I mean, that's for sure, but you've got to remember that there's a lot of early game aggression with the junglers, so eyes on self mid and Yankos coming into game one. Eyes on Selfmade and Jankos, the two Polish junglers, one of them the MVP, the split the other. Pretty close in a lot of people's estimations, probably the second best jungler in the league. And now Selfmade in his first finals has to see how much of an impact he can have early on. Fnatic looking for that level one play as Whippo, perhaps will catch out Mickey. Rest of the team not quite there yet. There's the route, but Mickey should be able to walk his way away from, the, from this one. As, uh, there's not really much follow-up CC for Fnatic. Oh, but Fnatic, they just want to get a bit of information on where Yankos is starting because this influences a lot of early game priority. The fact that they didn't spot out Yankos here heavily suggests that Yankos is doing a solo clear. Or maybe he'll get a bit of assistance from... Oh, a good interrupt Whoa. there from Hillisang as well to delay the base from Mickey. Fnatic is setting up full control over this bot blue buff. This means they're going to get to lane very early, very quickly and they're going to get that priority push. This is going to enable Selfmade to be able to start on his red and then look to invade the enemy blue buff. That means that they can split the map and deny the ability for Yankos to actually support and play around the bot side, which he could look to do. Remember that Cogmore in the early game has a lot of damage just thanks to his W, and when you pair that with a Lulu, this lane can be very oppressive, very obnoxious to deal with, and Fnatic's game plan is clearly like, hey, no jungle support for you, we want to leave you on an island, and we we want to make you feel as uncomfortable as possible in the early game. Well, we'll see if Fnatic are able to keep up that pressure in the bottom lane. Do you want to just remind everyone of how 
high the stakes are in this game. Both Fnatic and G2 have been in every single LEC final we have ever had. One of those two teams has participated. Fnatic, over 15 splits, have got seven titles. G2, in nine splits, have won more than half the time. Six titles for them. If G2 win today, they will equal Fnatic's record seven titles in the LEC. Yeah, both teams are winners. That is the pedigree that comes from being a part of either G2 or Fnatic. And in recent history, it has heavily gone in the favor of G2. But last but alone, it was insanely close. Both best of fives going all the way to five games. And I know many fans are hoping that we get to see the same thing again today. But already, we're getting some action as Selfmade looks for a gank top. Flash in from Whippo means that Wonder will flash in response. And summon a burn for both the top laners. But Selfmade on the top side of the map could look for a repeat gank on the Orn if he so desires. So I do want to backtrack a little bit to some of the early pathing that we did see because a good ward that you can see on your screen right now to the left of Yankos was placed to see if Fnatic would actually look for an invade. They decided not to go for it, which has now given Yankos all of his buffs and a setup gank for the bot side of the map. They recognize that Hillisang and Reckless are in a bit of an awkward position here. The wave state is good for G2, so they want to see if they can make something happen. But of course, Reckless has chosen to reset. He knows that he can get a good Cheetah recall off here, grab himself an early BF sword, and make Aphelios a little bit more powerful here in the 2 versus 2. Yeah, getting those double dawns makes it a little bit easier for him to survive. I was wondering if G2 were running the double exhaust bottom lane, as they have done in the past. Instead, it's the heal on Caps to try, him, uh, try and keep himself a little bit more topped up if he ever gets jumped on. Yankos has spent a little bit more time down here, but more than likely, this is just to allow Caps and Mickey to push in the wave and so that they can get a, a recall without jungler intervention. You can also see the pretty deep ward that's been put in the bot lane as well. Nemesis and Whippo both running teleports. Both still currently have it available. If they see an opportunity to attack Caps and Mickey, they're going to look for it. But so far, based on how Reckless and Hillisang have been playing this lane, oh, they're feeling very comfortable. Hillisang trying to interrupt the back. He does have that information. This is just basically making it harder for G2 to get a good base off. You saw that Reckless was able to go back and then come back to lane, and he didn't lose any farm. He's actually still ahead in the CS department, and he was able to get that Doran's played. Caps wanted to do a similar thing right here, but because his recall is going to be delayed, Fnatic have the opportunity to deny more CS, punish him a little bit more. But fortunately for Caps, the wave state the way that it currently is, he probably shouldn't lose that much CS. Yeah, it's going to be able to get back on in just enough time. Wonder here in the top lane, looking for a gank from Yankos, but that second bush is awarded, and Whippo now will be aware that Yankos is waiting around the wings. And knowing that he's already burnt his flash, of course, can just back away. The wave isn't in the best position for him, but be able to get a few of the CS before it pushes out. Good response there from Whippo, playing defensively, recognizing that because he doesn't have his flash, the possibility of a gank is very real, and he's respecting that. We do see Perks taking a bit of poke in the mid lane. This is one of the obnoxious things about Vagar into Azir. The cage is just enough range that it can harass every time Perks tries to put a Sand Soldier up, and he's able to land that bit of poke. Now we see a Reckless and Hillisang classic. After their first reset at around level 4, they actually have this habit of always roaming into mid lane. Not necessarily to force a play, it's mainly to just have a little bit of control. Maybe there's an opportunity there to make a play, then they'll take advantage of it. But if not, they'll just go back to bot and catch the wave as we see more action in the top lane. Yeah, Bupu's trading. I don't know if Yankos knows that Selfmade's here. Soon they should realize Bupu's going to get land the chains down. Selfmade with the sonic wave hits the resonating strike on Yankos and forces him away. Bupu looking for a little bit more damage as Wonder lands the knockup. But Wonder is going to be able to get back underneath his tower. Selfmade's still on the chase. No level 6 for him yet. Brittle would have done a lot of damage, but now with Whippo being level 6, I wonder if Wonder can stay around behind his tower, because he's not yet hit that ultimate mark, and here comes the Call of the Forge Guard against the one who usually prays for him, but a great Bellows Breath will stop it in its tracks, and Whippo dies! Incredible play from Wonder there to anticipate the ult, and then use his W to get out of it. Oh, meanwhile in the mid lane, a bit of poke, the ult! Not going to be enough to get that kill onto Perks, which means that G2 end up drawing first blood with no response. You could see the game plan here for Fnatic. They want to use their level advantage. Six on Bwipo, five on Selfmade. They steal away the ultimate and they're like, this will be easy. So the knockup comes up, but a great use of the Bellows Breath, as you were talking about Medic, to make sure that he doesn't get knocked up while still dealing damage. And then also another great knockup from Yankos to interrupt a lot of damage as well. The coordination between Yankos and Wonder was flawless, and that allowed them to stop this dive coming through from Fnatic. 
And we can see Wanda comes back with a catalyst of the Aeons building up towards an Abyssal Mask. Will help, of course, against the double AP threat that comes out from Whippo and Nemesis in this game. Uh, usually, well, you can see either the Sunfire Cape or the Abyssal Mask Cape first on Orns, depending on the laning matchup. Here, Wanda has the good sense to go for Magic Resist first. I think if, if he hadn't gone for Magic Resist first, I would have said that was a little bit foolish. Wanda, but he's <laughs> yeah, decided also, to itemize properly. <laughs> you're also playing against double AP, so uh, getting yeah. that early Abyssal Mask is always going to be super valuable as well. Um, now kind of like looking at the map state in the way that it is, you have to start thinking about who's going to prioritize Drake. Could teams look for a swap to maybe go for an early Rift Herald, given that we're getting close to the 8-minute mark? You can see both junglers pathing towards the bot side. Yanko's only level 5, and given that Reckless and Hillisang currently have the push in the bot lane, they've actually started this one off. Getting very low, Perks roams down, we're going to see a fight. Dragon is secured, Exhaust goes down on Yankos as he looks to try and get away, but he's gobbled up and spat out by Hillisang, and there's a lot of damage coming out from the Inferno. Reckless with his first kill of the game, and Fnatic's first of the series. Perk's going to shuffle his way away as Wonders teleported in. He does have that call of the Forge God, but I don't think uh, G2 want to take this fight, as Fnatic have the river control, have the Dragon, and have their first kill of this match. Fnatic was in a much better position when it came to that Drake. Yankos was testing the waters, thinking, hey, maybe I can actually get a collapse from the rest of my team, ends up getting punished. But look at Wonder behind, he has the ult. There are both flashes available for Fnatic, and with the TP coming in, you can see Nemesis wants to join this party. Mickey, low, underneath the turret. The flank is on, it's five members in the bottom lane, only eight minutes. Fnatic unwilling to give up on this fight as they have been through the entire split. Mickey's gonna flash away, just about manages to survive. Perk's on his way across as well. He's yet to join this fight though, so it's a 4v5 still in favor of Fnatic, but they've already lost one. Here comes and here Perks. comes the double knockup, and here comes Perks from the side. It's a double for Cogmore, and Fnatic find, the, uh, find themselves running back towards their base, limping away as G2 takes Two. Disaster for Fnatic. They attempt another dive, and again, you can see what they're trying to do. The setup looked great. They had level advantages, they had health advantage, they had numbers advantage. Everything looked like an advantage for Fnatic, yet G2 was able to find the outplay. Let's see if Pipple can get something back. He's lying in wait. Mickey, very low, no summoner spells. Self-made's on his way as well. Whippo trying to get on towards Mickey. Gets the damage down, and there is the kill. Now, Whippo in the middle of a lot of minions here. Caps has the red buff. That's ticking away. Only Vampir, Vampir Acceptor on him, though, as Self-made flashes forward. Caps doesn't get the flash away from the Sonic Wave, and he is shut down by Fnatic. So Fnatic finally answer, and they get themselves a good number of kills. They'll also get the Rift Herald because they made this swap up towards topside. Good adaptation on the fly, and Medic, we're only getting a taster of what this entire series is going to look like. Constant aggression, constant adaptation. Yankos will walk into Fnatic, recognizing this has started, but it's going to be too little, too late. Fnatic will walk... Ooh. Oh, okay. <laughs> Yankos okay. had smite, and there wasn't, wasn't a smite there. That was 24 HP away yeah. from disaster <laughs> for Fnatic. Yankos had smite as well, but he wasn't in range. But let's backtrack. Let's go back to this bot lane dive. So Wonder, he TP'd bot because Yankos had died in that previous Drake. Fnatic's duel were just trying to push this in to look for a reset, and then the TP comes through from Nemesis with the Silas still here as well. So again, three versus five, Fnatic's feeling pretty comfortable. But Mickey and Caps with a good exhaust onto Whippo I mean he can't actually execute the backline, so Fnatic gets split up. They're playing three versus Orn and two versus the backline, and that is what allows G2 to win out in this skirmish. But then clever thinking comes through from Fnatic. Whippo sneaks his way into the brush, lies in wait, and he knows what G2 is going to do. He knows that G2 want to push out this wave, he knows that they want to reset, and so Selfmade comes back into the fight, is able to assist Whippo in finding these kills, and then this is how Fnatic immediately answer back. And what could have been a disastrous play that started to snowball the game in favor of G2, again, quick thinking, from Fnatic puts them back in an even state in this first game. And what I love from Fnatic there was they weren't just playing around the bottom lane. They realized, you know, Caps and Mickey are down there, our jungle is down there. Reckless and Hillisang immediately went up to the Rift Herald, started it up, and then got that for themselves as well. So they now have that advantage to try and look to take down a turret. It looks like it's already been used in the top lane. Uh, and it should be able to actually just charge in and get the first turret of the game. And all that gold going over to Reckless is only a good thing for Fnatic. Yeah, I, I love the fact that Fnatic swapped out of this 2v2 as quickly as possible because the obnoxious thing about ranged matchups is how oppressive and how much they can bully you out of lane. But the way in which Reckless and Hillisang have played this 2v2 has mitigated a lot of that early pressure with the early invade, with the getting to lane first, with the proactive plays that we're seeing from them. They've managed to mitigate a lot of that, and now they're getting around the map. They've secured themselves the first tower. They've now reclaimed gold advantage, and now they're looking for a collapse in top lane. 
Can we catch out Caps the flash forward from Hillisang? There's the Dragon's Rage, and there goes Self Made. His first kill on the board as Jankos comes in with the Cataclysm trying to lock Hillisang in place. The thick skin won't save him for too long, but he's not tanking up the tower. Perk shuffling in from the side will be able to take down the Tarm Kench, and it's a one for one trade in the top lane. Medic, the action is not slowing down. We're four for four in kills right now, and Fnatic recognized that Caps was isolated in the top lane. So they use the Tarm Kench ultimate to flank in from behind. They bring Self Made as well, and they're able to find that pick, but G2 is quick to respond. They're able to find a pick of their own, and they keep the game on its toes. The gold is dead even. We're 12 minutes in, Medic, and both teams <laughs> are fighting tooth and nail to stay relevant in this game. I mean, this is G2 Fnatic, right? This is the reason that they have been in 15 of the 15 finals we have had in the <laughs> LEC. This is why only one team has ever claimed even a single title away from these two teams. It is the greatest rivalry in eSports, well, in League of Legends, at least, in my opinion. And Fnatic and G2 are showing us just why that is the case. No first so. item yet on Reckless. He's building up towards the Essence Reaver as Hillisan comes in towards the bottom lane to try and force Mickey away. So we can see now G2 is clearly setting up for the next Drake. They're trying to force Reckless and Hillisang back so they can gain some control over the bot wave. And they're going to try and use their numbers to push in mid. Oh, as they go onto Nemesis. Nemesis put down the cage and thought he was safe, but Perks and Yankos have something else to say. And now that dragon is pretty easy for G2. Yeah, so with their numbers advances, they should be able to secure this. It would be dangerous for Fnatic to try and contest. So I think just putting more plates onto Reckless, pushing in that mid wave makes a lot more sense. Hillisang, he doesn't have flash. Doesn't really have a way to get out of this apart from limping back towards his turret. Wonder He's just going to run away. Chase. Just runs away. He waddles. <laughs> Tom Ketch waddles more than runs, Vedius. Trust me, as a man who waddles, that is exactly what it looks like. And Whippo he's able here. to disengage yep. uh, pretty cleanly. Now Perks looking to hold onto the mid lane. Whippo knows that Perks has no ultimate, but he doesn't know that Wanda's right behind him. Yeah, the Kingslay will heal up Whippo just a bit, but the call of the Forge God is too little too late. Shutdown goes down as Whippo overextends a little bit in the mid lane. Yeah, a small overextension there from Whippo ends up getting punished by G2. They're going to extend the kill lead to six now. And now G2 have their eyes set on the bot lane, but Reckless and Hill are saying good awareness. They know they don't have pressure in mid. They know that River doesn't belong to them, so they're playing defensively. And for now, the game is going to slow down, but only for a little while. Like, there's still a lot of our towers left, and I feel like both teams are going to be looking to play for these objectives. It's difficult to siege against an Azir. So for now, Fnatic's priority is going to be invested in trying to secure this bot tier 1. Meanwhile, G2, with their longer range of the Azir and the Cogmore, it wouldn't surprise me if their focus is actually more invested towards this mid lane to try and punish this Veigar before he gets to a point where he's unmanageable. Well, we have seen a sort of a shift in G2's uh, strongest member across the course of this game. At the start, of course, Caps picking up those two early kills. It looked like he would be the key carry for them. Uh, for them. But now he's sitting about 1,500 gold, uh, gold behind Reckless, whereas Perks is sitting about 1,000 to 1,500 up on Nemesis in the mid lane. Perks is going to be one of the key carries for G2 in these team fights. We have three minutes left on the next Dragon, so perhaps one will come up around there. Or, as you say, Vedius, perhaps those outer towers are where we're going to see the next skirmishes. Yeah, so you can see, as we were talking about, Fnatic brought their duo into the mid lane. They pushed out that wave against Perks, and now they're rotating towards the bot side of the map. This is forcing Wonder to disengage because he knows he's at risk of getting collapsed. And because Fnatic now know that G2 is not on the bot side, they can rotate back to mid while slowly chipping away at this tower and not conceding full map priority. Meanwhile, G2 is doing the exact same trade, just on the opposite side of the map. Both teams are just kind of wrestling for this mid priority right now, as the next Herald will be spawning soon. And I imagine that's going to be a big point of contention for both these teams. Well, it looks like Fnatic have slightly earlier play down towards this bottom lane. That's their second turret of the game taken with it. About a 700 gold lead. Nothing too consequential, but can always snowball pretty rapidly in a game like this. The pace has slowed down, Betty. We've only had two kills in the last four minutes. It's true. It's true, Medic. But I imagine it's going to pick up again very soon. Let's do a quick item and level check-in because we can see that, as you mentioned earlier, a lot of the core itemization is starting to come through a lot of first items across the board. But level 11 for Perks, a level 11 for Wonder means they have those two points in their ultimate and they're going to be feeling very strong. What I find interesting here is G2 has actually decided to concede pressure around this Rift Herald and instead are going to trade it for more map control. They're going to secure the tier 1 on the bot side of the map. They're going to push in mid-wave, but they're not going to overextend. 
they're going to wait, and they're going to reset, and then look to get back on the map. So Fnatic feeling pretty comfortable right now. They're still dead even in gold. They're pretty set on their itemization as well. Yes, they're a little bit behind in experience due to the deaths that both Whippo and Nemesis have, have had so far in this game. But they have a Rift Herald, which means that they're going to immediately use it mid, which makes sense. Because when playing against an Azir with his high wave clear, you want to be able to break that turret down. And this is the perfect objective to help you with that. Yeah, because Bubu was catching those top waves and pushing them in, someone had to go up there and answer him. So G2 unable to get enough defenses rallied to the mid lane to actually stop that tower going down. Fnatic with their third of the game, and a minute left before that Mountain Dragon comes up. We're not looking at soul points for anyone, it's one apiece in terms of dragons, but if you can continue to take these neutral objectives, you can really get those next fights on your own terms. You know, when you're looking at the third dragon, at the fourth dragon fight, you want to be pulling the enemy team towards you rather than having to step in knowing that you might lose the soul points. So what we can see now is that both teams playing this 4-1 setup, neither has really a champion that you dedicate to uh, that two split pushing lanes because you have the Vega and the Azir, of course. So you kind of want to shadow those champions to make sure that they're feeling safe. They can push out these waves and take another towers. We can see G2 continuing to gain a little bit more control over the map. You talked about the Drake, and that's definitely going to be the next big point of contention because that Drake win condition is definitely going to be something we have to bear in mind. Both comps scale quite well. I'm really excited to see how these team fights will play out because I honestly think they could go either way. I think that G2 have a slight scaling advantage, but honestly, because there are so many intricacies, especially when you look at how G2 and Fnatic actually play team fights, it, you can never really say for sure. And G2, with the push that they have in bot, will gain first access to the bot side river. Now it's all about this fight for mid priority. And given that Perks got to the way first, it looks like G2 are going to have control for now. Abyssal Voyage used by Hennesang. The Twin Shadows come out as well as Caps is slowed down. They're going to lock him up with the Gravitum. He's actually just stuck in place. The exhaust comes down and teleports here from G2 to try and join this fight. But Wonder is a long way away as Hennesang's already fallen. Wonder goes in. Call of the Forge God comes down. Looking for the knock-up on Ripple. And Reckless doesn't land it on either. Mickey low. Selfmade kicks him away and takes his life. But Perks is now going to jump forward as Selfmade gets the Wild Growth stolen away from Mickey. Wonder jumping in as well as Perks goes on a rampage. And this is devastation. G2 have just wiped Fnatic away in the mid lane. And it's only Reckless left alive. Caps, Yankos, and Wonder looking to slay the Ephelios, so or if they can't take this tower and get that dragon. Just as we were talking about team fights, we have one unfold in front of our eyes, and it is G2 that ends up coming out on top. Three kills for two. They'll get themselves the mid tier one. They'll also secure the mountain and Fnatic. Oh losing a little bit more control over this game. You can see how difficult these fights are for them. When they force themselves into this narrow choke point, engaging with this composition is quite difficult. They're very reliant on using these spooky ghosts, the slows, combined with the uh, the field from the Vagar to trap targets in this point, but a quick flash comes out from Caps to be able to disengage. The TPM from Wonder actually isn't that needed this early on into the fight because a great stopwatch from Yankos buys enough time for Caps and Perks to reposition. Selfmade tries to get something back. He does find a quick execute onto Mickey, but he also then baits the rest of Fnatic too close to the fight, allowing for a good knockup from Wonder. The ultimate comes through from Perks, who just barely dies at the very end, and Reckless is the only one left standing. And it's the issue is if you leave either Caps or Perks alive on the outside of a team fight, they are just going to rain hell down upon you. They have so much sustained damage in a fight, and you could see Reckless wasn't able to get in the same position to output that DPS for Fnatic. It's a 400 gold lead only for G2. The kill score might look like devastation for Fnatic, but it's not too dissimilar. 2,000 gold lead for Reckless in that bottom lane. Mid lane, though, 2,000 ahead is Perks on the Azir. Only scaling up now has that Leandri's complete on the Azir. And I wonder if that's a demonstration of how team fights will go from now on, Vedius, or as you say, if just those tiny intricacies, those tiny changes could slew it in Fnatic's favor. So the problem that Fnatic is going to have as they look towards the future fights is that Reckless is in a great position, right? He's working towards his third item, he's gonna have the Infinity Edge, and he's gonna be feeling very comfortable. But Fnatic want to try and eliminate this Cogmore as quickly as possible, even though he's not the biggest damage threat, because even on just one item, he does so much damage. And on top of that, Perks is incredibly fed, and the same... But at 
this point in the game, it's not going to be as scary. So it's kind of the reckless show for the time being until Whipple gets a couple more items, which means the G2's going to have control. And Fnatic, while I think they should stall, they're instead going to look for another fight. Moonlight Vigil used the cages down as well as Whipple is looking for the Yankles. If you can catch him out, they could win this fight. But Fnatic just have to back away from it. Wonder wasn't even there, wasn't even in the fray as Whipple jumps forward. There's the Cataclysm jumping onto Caps, but Whipple is caught out and he's already down. And now Nemesis is going to get chased out with the call of the Forge God as well. Wonder looking for the flank position, Perk shuffling forward. How's the flash? Has the streamer shuffle available if he wants it as well? But instead, G2 just back away. They are willing just to take that kill and then look to reset the map. I think this was a situation where Fnatic saw that they had numbers advantage, and because they had a ward that they could TP flank on, it was one of those situations where they thought they would try to capitalize. Unfortunately, it just didn't go the way that they wanted to. The initial engage from Whippo, excuse me, actually looked very promising. The fact that Fnatic had those five members forcing G2 into this choke point, but it was this Azir turret that I think made it far too difficult for Fnatic to commit to the engagement, because you can see G2 just slowly disengaging into this choke point. Perks and Caps are actually in a very safe position. Meanwhile, Yankos is just tanking up the front line. You can see that Wonder is miles away, but now Hillasang's out of the fight. He's gone, and the rest of Fnatic can't follow up on this engage, so Whip was effectively in a one versus five, and then Nemesis, what, like, what's he going to do against this stone plate job? Jarvan, who's just holding the line for G2. So I think this was a situation where Fnatic saw an opportunity, they overcommitted, and then G2 ended up punishing. And a big issue for Fnatic as well is that Selfmade has gone for the Umbral Glaive first here. He's gone for a little bit of ability to clear out wards, a little bit of extra lethality, but it means he can't really withstand much time trying to get into the back line of G2. If he's hit by a few auto attacks from Caps, a few auto attacks from Perks, he's just going to get shredded. And so it means that he really has to find a great kick if they're going to be able to work through these fights. Because right now it looks like if Fnatic force a fight too hard, G2 are very willing just to step back and then slowly work through the Fnatic players. Yeah, I think you're right, Medic, because when we kind of look at how G2's composition is playing out, it feels very front to back. You know, you yep. have the two main tanks, you have the Wonder on Orn, you have Yankos on Jarvan, and these two have just built full tank. And the Lulu, typically the problem with ranged or um, uh, mage supports is that they can't face check the enemy jungle, but that's fine because they have that covered for, which means that there's enough peel and enough protection for the long range backline that is Cogmore and Azir, that if Fnatic can't find a flank, can't find a pick, it's actually very difficult for them to successfully get onto caps and perks, which means that G2 is just gonna have more damage. So these upcoming fights are just gonna get harder and harder for Fnatic, unless they can get that good vision control to find those flanks. And as you can see on the map right now, they don't really have it. There is that one ward, but there's no TPs available, outside of Fnat uh, Nemesis, unless he wants to try for that, which means the G2, they're going to start off the Baron and force Fnatic to come to them. It might just be gone before Fnatic can even get there. Hillisang's checking into it. Now he knows the G2 are on it. It's gone. Baron already wow. gone. It's down. And there's no one here from Fnatic to really follow up on a fight. Hillisang's going to try and step forward, but G2 are just willing to back away. So, okay, we'll take all five players having the Baron buff. We'll take our 2,500 gold lead, and we'll take a commanding position in this game. Good setup there from G2. They used their mid prior and they recognized that uh, they were much stronger. So if Fnatic tried to force another fight that they'd probably win. So Fnatic playing more a defensive style, conceded mid prior, allowing G2 to then move into the bot side of Fnatic, or the top side rather, of Fnatic's jungle, giving them full control over the Baron space and just melting it down. Cogmore, Azir, Leandries with the Rage Blades and Blade of the Ruin King. Like, G2 just melt through these objectives so quickly and you can see them now do the same thing against this mountain. Drake. G2 seem to have so much more control. Gold is very even. I feel like that these fights are just going to be very difficult to play out for Fnatic. So let's see if they can find that pick that they're going to need if they want to stay relevant in this game. Right now it looks like they're going to put Nemesis up into the top lane just to clear out those waves as they push in. Of course no inhibitors down yet so we don't have any of those super minions pushing in but G2 are looking to use this Baron buff to its full effect. Two minutes left on it. Perk splitting off by himself. The rest of G2 down towards this bottom lane. But both a level down on one double with the Abyssal Voyage coming in. That's right in the middle of all of G2 and Hillisang jumps straight into his own demise as Caps opens up. The exhaust coming out, Hillisang able to flash away, but now Wonder looking for the call of the Forge God, looking for the knockup, lands it, and Caps will get the kill. Nemesis flanking with the TP, he's exhausted as well. Whippo now forced underneath the tower as Perks slides his way in and flashes forward. Whippo underneath the turret will fall very soon. Nemesis, where you're caught in the middle of all four of the G2 players and you're gonna go down as well. G2 with a clean 4 for zero and they're gonna look to push in and perhaps end this game. 
I think this was the last ditch effort from Fnatic. They recognized that these fights were only going to get harder. They saw that Azir was in the mid lane and they thought, maybe we can find a fight before Perks can collapse. But even in the 4v5, G2 was far too strong. And now with five members and a Baron buff, they're going to look to end the game. Self-made in Hillisang, last chance saloon on this defense as G2 are pushing on the Nexus turrets. And really, what can Elise Sin and the Time Catch do? Selfmade tries to do something but really ends up doing absolutely nothing at all. The second Nexus Tower will fall and G2 are back to winning ways. They will take the first game against Fnatic. The early game was bloodthirsty. Medic, it was chaotic, it was across the board. Uh, kills everywhere. I think that we saw some clever stuff from both teams. I loved what Fnatic was doing in the early game to mitigate what G2 was trying to do, but when we started seeing more of the fights, we saw how much harder things were getting for Fnatic in the actual team fights, and so many picks that they attempted were just not working out in their favor. So, very close stuff from Fnatic, but I think that this time round, the draft advantage that G2 was able to find is ultimately what allowed them to win these later game fights and win out the game. I mean, between at the 12 minute mark, both teams had four kills. At the 26 minute mark, Fnatic had six kills in total, and G2 had 16 kills in total. After that early game, G2 just really took control of the game and were able to take the win from there. We'll see what Fnatic can do to change things up, Vedius, because. Like, the, the draft looked relatively good for them. It looked like a typical Fnatic draft. I mean, I think the, the the problems with Fnatic's draft was that their engage wasn't easy. They had no real backline threat. And unless they could catch... Uh, members of G2 out of position, it was going to be different. And you could see multiple times, Fnatic, I think, did the right thing. They had the right idea. A lot of their TP flanks, a lot of the opportunities that they went for was when G2 was in a 4-1 setup and someone on the side lane couldn't join, so they tried to use their numbers advantage to quickly try and catch G2 out. But you just saw time and time again how much time the Jarvan could buy, especially when combined with a Lulu as well. Stoneplate Jarvan. which meant that they could never find a successful fight. Well, I totally agree with you there, Vidius. We, uh, coming up next, we're going to hear more from our analysts about how G2 took game one of that series, so don't you guys go anywhere.